Welcome to the Long Box Paradox, episode 30. I'm uh, going to be going over some curated picks that I have for this week. I'm a little bit behind because of the holiday and didn't get my comics in time. So we're going to start out right away with Deceased number three. I uh, picks up right where the last issue left off, and there's this issue had a lot of emotional weight to it. We start off with Alfred in the cave and bodies all over the floor. He has um, cleaned up sort of the mess there. Um, the Rob, Robin, Batman, the, the bodies are all there. He's killed them, and he's you know saying sorry, boys, and. Her hair scene catches the emotion of the scene and the look on Alfred's face. And he goes into one of the bat jets and starts just bombing the streets of the infected. Uh, we then turn to Harley Quinn and she has now got a gun and the infected Joker attacks her and she shoots him and she's talking about how this is the greatest therapy session ever and an infected birds of prey show up um kind of interesting and it's weird you know like we're getting right into them with people they were close to loved ones um damien is somewhat affected by what's going on you know jonathan kent's trying to talk to him and he's just kind of shutting down uh superman decides they need the communication relay in the Daily Planet, and he goes and cleans out all the infected of the building, uh, Perry White involved too, where, you know, you have Superman's inner monologue. He closes the building down and then asks Green Arrow and Dinah to take care of his family while he goes to go to his home, and on his way to Smallville, he runs into Black Lightning. Black Lightning's fighting an infected Clayface. Um... And we get to probably one of the heaviest scenes. Uh, Clark gets to Smallville, and his mother is fine. He's like, where's De where's Pa? And she says, well, he came at me. I've got him locked up. So he goes out and opens up the trap door in the barn, and Jonathan Kent comes out and attacks him. And he, you know, kind of easily dodges him and then puts him back in and uses his heat vision through the trap door and he takes Ma Kent out of there and that's kind of where it ends um this was the issue that just had all the emotional stakes in it and it improved on number three and that's I've now like this that issue one lackluster for me issue two stepped it up and now issue three now is the emotional hammer uh, very well done. I, I'm impressed uh, for something I was so down on on issue one. Uh, I really hated their movie homage variant, though. The Nun is one of my least favorite movies, and especially like with all the sh really crappy iterations of the Conjuring universe, it was one of the worst. And I, just seeing that cover just brought back every bad feeling. I uh, did love the Matina Wonder Woman infected variant though i'm gonna give this issue 7.5 or 8 i'm in between but i i really really dug it um and again the emotional weight really carries this book through for this issue uh definitely check it out uh i'm now putting this series as a buy uh you might want to trade weight but the issues are pretty easily uh, available to get so go out and buy it. it it's a fun read well not fun but i mean it has the horror element and everything and i kind of dig it uh now we're going to go to a book that i was looking forward to and i found a little lackluster and that is space bandits number one so right away i'm like okay you're gonna get the bombast of mark miller his writing and it's kind of uh movie type writing with the art of Matteo Scalera which if you've read Black uh, Science you're already up on his work and I'm gonna be honest I, I just I, I was I, it was hard for me to get involved in it it just 
wasn't reader friendly, which is weird because most of the Mark Millar books are very, or Mark Miller books are very reader friendly, where you can just jump in and you're right into it. Uh, this one, it's well, okay. Weird enough, the beginning of this book, they talk about '80s culture <clears throat> and then how long it took to get to space, and it is a cruise ship in space that has Lionel Richie on the front of it. The the uh, not starboard, but the the sh- front of the ship was Lionel Richie's head. So that alone, like, you're just like, okay, what the hell? And it is a heist happening. This, uh, the main ringmaster of this bandit crew, she has a lizard that can emit a sleep gas. They put it through. Um, you can tell her crew isn't really digging the way she's doing stuff because no one's dying. She's doing things in a nonviolent way and they're successful, but... Her crew are getting angry about because they really dig violence, I guess I'd say. And they're successful the way they've been doing it. Um, they basically have a mutiny on her. And then we then go on to meeting a new another character. And it's a weird, but it just, it kind of jumps around a bit and... There was nothing there that really drew me in. I mean, I'm going to give it another try. Uh, The only other one I can think of that kind of did this to me was uh, Chrononauts, because Chrononauts, the characters were kind of just so unlikable right off the bat that it was hard for me to get into. Uh, And honestly, the the basis of the story was pretty basic. Like, there, there wasn't... Other than the whole 80s vibe with Lionel Richie's head, there was nothing really making me want to like dig in even deeper into it 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 was okay it was my definition of disposable media though i'm gonna give it a five out of ten again it was nothing great nothing terrible it was just kind of there and i actually usually mark miller his work i i expect a little bit more out of especially like the last couple of books he put out have been dynamite like magic order uh, Jupiter's Legacy, Jupiter's Circle, I, like, fantastic, and this was just wasn't there, even Huck was actually pretty damn good that, like, I was drawn into that character in that world, and Reborn also. Uh, I'm hoping for a little bit better on the next one, but right now, uh, I'm very tepid on it, it just, it's, just exists. So, I mean, I'm not telling you not to read it, just know that at least for the first issue it's set up with which you're not really figuring out what the hell it's setting up other than this team up between two criminals um oh yeah and the jail is a crustacean that that's one i left out yeah it's a giant lobster um i don't know if it's a rock lobster rock lobster okay anyway (laughs) sorry um for the third review this week and probably the biggest and longest that i'm gonna do Walking Dead 193 came out, and around Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, word started getting around on the net and rumors and collector forms that Walking Dead 193 is the last issue. There had been solicitations in the other two previews of, you know, 194, 195, but it started getting out, and then Robert Kirkman kind of tweeted out something that started giving a little bit more credence. By Monday evening, it was confirmed uh, Diamond had dried out um, their reserves of orders. They eventually got a couple more. Um, Sales on eBay started running, I I believe it was up to about $18 at one point by Tuesday night, Wednesday. Kind of weird that just so sudden to end it, but... Maybe Kirkman in his head thought, you know, sales had dropped. Um, He has other things cooking and just needed to put his concentration elsewhere. And after Rick died, I felt it became Carl's story. So it kind of became Carl's story, except this issue became the story. Um, 71 pages... And at the regular cover price, which, I mean, that's a nice thank you to fans, because, I mean, Marvel and DC probably would charge $10. So we start out with 
a walker walking towards this farmhouse. And it's a couple of panels, pages, and you see it walking closer and closer. And then all of a sudden you see a sword slice. And it's an older gentleman with a leather eye patch um, across. Uh, it's kind of like what Beric Dondarrion was wearing, sort of, in Game of Thrones. And then we are now introduced to an older Carl. I don't know if they actually specify how many years passed. Um, he is now married to Sophia, um, not Lydia. He has a daughter named Andrea. They're living on the outskirts of town. And he's left starting to wonder, okay, what, why is there a walker? We're, we have safe zones, there's checkpoints. And he realizes that Herschel's in town, Herschel being Maggie's son. And apparently he runs a stage show where he has some of the last remaining walkers and he shows them around town as like a traveling freak show almost. And he then is pissed at Carl because apparently it costs a ton of money now to own a walker because there's so few left, especially in the safe zones. And Carl is arrested for damaging private property. Uh, we then see Maggie. Maggie is now the president of the Free Zones. And Herschel is kind of an entitled brat. Uh, at one point, he's compared to the Commonwealth's uh, mayor's son, Sebastian. Uh, and it's weird because, you know... Uh, oh, God. Glenn was so likable, and even Maggie, and he's like the worst combination that you could have gotten from them. Uh, Carl now has been taken to trial, and Maggie comes in and orders that he won't be fined because he wouldn't be able to afford it, but he needs to find a replacement walker for her son's show. Uh, Carl kind of takes it upon himself and kills all of Herschel's walkers, which then kind of puts him on the run. Uh, Carl goes out west with Lydia, and we find out that is where Laura, Eugene, are. Eugene's built a, or building a rail line, um, and Carl was delivering stuff to him. He comes back, Carl's arrested, Sophia's not necessarily happy with him. Um, also on their road, you see there's a house and a tombstone out there for Lucille. No one answers at that house. Um, at the main trial, they, they go to see Judge Hawthor ha uh, Hawthorne. Judge Hawthorne is Michonne. She is now the major judge of the New World. And talk, she lets him go. She does not agree with what Herschel's been doing with the walkers and having them for profit when, you know, they're monsters. Uh, there's a statue of Rick missing a hand in the middle of the town square. And Herschel kind of goes off on Carl. But, you know, Carl kind of not listening to it. And you kind of understand where Herschel's coming, why he likes having the walkers to remind him of his father. Because um, he's never met him. And we then go to Carl reading a story about his father to his daughter. And it it ends, and he kind of just has this smile on his face. So it's an ending. And I like that we kind of see what happened to everybody. Carl kind of gets a happy ending where I know at some point, you know, there was, like, fan art and this weird kind of thought that he was going to be one of the last people alive just roaming the earth by himself but he kind of got his happy ending and you know even though the world is still on the precipice of going either way i, I like that he he got a little bit of peace could the series have gone on longer yeah probably they they could have rung out another three to four years probably but I think it's better to end early 
didn't stay too long, and it might have been getting close to that point of staying too long. I'm going to give this an 8. It, it wasn't a clean ending, but it could have been way more messy. Uh, it's worth a buy. I know a lot of people trade weight on it. Um, the Commonwealth, I'm just warning you now, it, it is an unfathomably long story with nothing going on for a good chunk of it. But to get to the last four issues... It's worth trudging through it. They they came back and ended well. And you can't hope for anything better than what they gave. Um, so I applaud Robert Kirkman for basically putting Image back on the map and having probably one of the most successful indies probably ever published. I, and especially for, you know, a book that's black and white. I, I I commend Robert Kirkman for the work, and I mean he built an empire out of it now, and I can't say I there was a uh, oh god um I can't remember what the podcast was, but he talked about how he you know got into the industry, and it was fascinating. Oh, the WTF pad, podcast with Mark Maron. It's totally worth a listen if you can dig it up and find it. It might be on Stitcher. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm, I think I'm good with a solid eight. I could possibly go 8.5, but there were some parts a little lacking. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for joining me. Um, it's 4th of July and I have to work tonight. So, uh, kind of hurrying through things today. Uh, I hope everybody has a happy and safe 4th of July. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and take care of yourselves and love one another.